Hello everyone, Kieran from Keys Minis. Today we're going to be painting a black leather, um, kind of a bit of a rustic damaged leather. I'm using it on, um, so with Abaddon Black, I'm just going over a thin coat, uh, over a black primer spray. Um, I think I'm mine are from Forge Sprays or something like that. Um, not, not Chaos Black, but any kind of black spray will do. Um, one or two thin coats just to um, kind of complete the look or draw everything into the same colour and, and that's it for this. Um, obviously I'm using an Aragorn figure um, here um, from the Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings set, uh, quite an old set I think now, but yeah um, I've done this on my Hexbane Hunters recently that were on a shorts uh, on Askel Hexbane uh, so I'm just kind of changing it up a little bit using Eschen Grey um, really thin layer now we're just going to kind of block in some of the the worn areas of the leather uh, I'm still using kind of probably glaze consistency maybe a little bit too thin here but that's part and parcel of it um, this stage is going to look messy um, and kind of when you put this layer on I was like oh, God, is this really going to come together um, but knowing that I'd already done this technique on, on the Ascolite Spain um, model, it, it kind of eased me a bit. But in these early stages of painting, you have to remember that, that it's not going to look kind of right at the start. So don't fear that factor. Um, just move on with it. Obviously I'm trying to hit all the folds uh, and any kind of area where you might think there'll be a bit of damage, like around their elbows. Um, where a sword might scrape from it from a scabbard or whatever um, and hitting kind of light points as well to kind of draw the leather out as well so on the next layer I'm going to use Dawnstone and it's the same process but now I'm going to be a little bit more finite and using a good brush with a good tip I'm going to start actually scratching in the damages uh, so thin lines obviously you can use the edge eye light to go around some of the edges but then just adding nice thin scratchy lines across the surfaces. Sorry, caught my uh, camera there. But as you see here, just nice thin scratchy lines. Uh, over all that area that we've just done, um, kind of make it a little shorter of a highlight. So obviously we're on the first one, like an 100%, not a full 100% cover area, but in between that probably around 75 to 50 percent you want to be covering on this this layer uh, with these scratches obviously it's a little harder on the arms especially on these kind of classic models um, Lord of the Rings ones that are so much smaller than the, the more modern GW range uh, but they're good fun to paint as well and you can paint these fairly quickly um, so it, it, it makes a nice challenge to switch between model variations and sizes as well so yeah, just take your time. Um, with this, uh, you can add in lines as well. As you can see, I'm kind of using scratch lines as well. So it looks really bright at the minute and kind of how you probably would highlight a gun up or whatever. But I'll use stages where you can draw it back a little bit as well. So don't worry about that. Um, again, just try and look for Ways you think the light and the damage will be more prominent. So I'm trying to show as much of this model as, I've, as I can. So um, there's lots of folds on, obviously Aragorn's arms uh, in his position is in. So those are good points to hit with highlights. And with these, I might use less scratches than on like the base of the cloak, um, the bottom areas of the cloak. Uh, just kind of highlight areas more. Uh, so it'll be a bit smoother in those areas but little damage lines every now and again just to add a bit of definition to it and that's that's this stage and we're going to move on to our next layer in a minute and that's just kind of shows you this stage here and the next one is using administratum grey so this is really fine now so little points uh, just work across the area that you've been working I'd say roughly um, 
probably around 25% of the area you just worked in. Um, you can add more finer detail and you can just focus this area as well if you don't have to go all the way up the cloak so you could hit the high points on, on those kind of folds of the arm or you could use it more to the bottom of the cloak as well depends which which way you're going I kind of find that like working levers now I, I sometimes push them to the real extremes but just by keeping it simple sometimes if you're going for a worn leather look then obviously you want to put some of the um, scratches and the highlights to their extremes but if you're going for just a simple kind of the classic kind of GW heavy metal style it's going to be a lot of um, thinner lines and edge highlights and stuff for black leather um, but again it's, it's finding what you prefer I, I like the rustic kind of worn leather certainly on a warrior like Aragon and stuff like that it's going to be through the through the ages and you could add like extra details with mud and, and stuff on the cloaks as well in, in later stages. I haven't done it but you can have a lot of fun with them um, worn leathers. So again like I said just at the top I'm trying to work in thinner area. Um, thing is when you're using like um, a giant lighting like on this area you need to make sure you clean your brush off as often as possible and uh, re-get the point or wipe any excess off because it's quite easy to just let the bush go a bit too dry and then you're not going to hit the point and sometimes obviously I'm using a really small brush here I think this is a size 0, zero. you're gonna have to do that more often than with like a, a size 2 or, or a 1 even um, there's no real some people can paint really rod with uh, a good point of brush uh, on higher sizes. Uh, I prefer just sometimes to switch between them. I have no set standard. Uh, it just depends what I'm feeling on, on, on the moment really. It's, I'm still learning that process of what's, what's my best brush. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just switch between the standards each time. And again, look here now, I've been over this area a little bit, but I want to make sure it kind of intensifies a little bit so I can recover it you can re go back over areas if you want as it's dry, dried uh, and just draw that highlight up a little bit more um, kind of same process with edge highlights sometimes you have to rework the area a couple of times same with the scratches process here uh, just go over the area it depends how, how much you want it to look I'm gonna draw it back a little bit now by using a glaze layer um, but I used probably the wrong colour or not enough water mixture on this one so it come out a little bit shinier than what um, I wanted this Phileo Black has kind of a real glossy kind of look uh, and I did use this on the Expo, Expert on Askel uh, but I think I might have even started base coating with this layer so by the time I would painted a lot of it in it had drawn the colours back you'll see at the end because I've got that model to compare but yeah just a thin layer again glazing you can go one or two layers and all it is is now just to really draw it back and um, and just change some of the highlights a little bit um, adds a little bit more sorry got my camera again <laughs> just adds a little bit more depth to the model um, I, I I believe um, you could just do this layer and be quite happy with it um, Obviously, like I said, with this, you could just use Ad Abaddon Black again, like the early stage, rather than this uh, Vallejo Black, but it's entirely up to you, uh, or even a contrast paint. Uh, when I do, like, brown leather, sometimes I'll use, like, snakebite leather or uh, Gorgon to fur or something like that, just a, a darker brown, uh, or a reddish brown uh, colour, uh, just to draw the area back. So you could use, like... Um, I think black temple contrast maybe um, or the silicon grey uh, depends which colour you want to kind of finish with or because I know one of them's got more of a bluey hue um, I can't remember which one it's been a while since I've used them both but yeah just drawing this area back I just find it um, adds some nice depth to the model normally as well I'd actually go back and do both stages uh, of the highlights again with Dawnstone and Administratum but just for speed with this one I moved straight on to just like the next layer which I went back to Administratum Grey and just went back then to redrawing some of those cracks and lines um, 
as you can see look that's the kind of glossy texture that this uh, black leaves it's not a bad thing it's probably just add more water into my uh, my mix or shake the bottle a little bit better and I wouldn't have had as much of a glossy finish but um, you could just go back with some bad and black just to tone it down a little bit as well um, especially into the, like the cracks and recesses um, sorry just wait for my camera to readjust here but um, again I'm just going back over the stage that we did previously like I said I probably would go back to the other stage a little bit quicker so I'd usually go back to the Dawnstone uh, and maybe on the like Spain I went back to the Dawnstone and yeah I just think I got a better coverage doing that so I'm just scratching the lines back in uh, or maybe not even all the lines that I previously scratched in just smaller surface areas um, just to really draw them out again and make, make it look like there's more worn leather um, the coat's been through its rigors <laughs> and got scratched multiple times and it's been polished or cleaned and it's uh, kept some of its scratches uh, and uh, yeah that's kind of like the look I like at the minute with leather it'll change it depends on what, what whatever area I want to paint in that, that moment or whatever feel I want with that moment and that's a good thing about painting just find what works for you and and, and have a look at it and see if it, if it fits you or it doesn't at that moment so you can take little points from this you don't have to go all the way like I've gone uh, like I said you could just go with some more cleaner edge highlights and create a similar effect but maybe with less scratches and here he is, Aragon. Like I said, I probably should have gone back to the Dawnstone. I think he's a little brighter than what I wanted. But it's one of those things, you know. Not every model I paint is perfect. But this is the Ascal Life Spain, and you can see a little bit more here how more drawn back it is because I did that additional layer of administratum uh, and I probably toned the, the gloss back. Both really fun miniatures um, to paint and I had a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.